you're schooling now. Everything is on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. So some about live. <coughs> yeah. That you can go live. Oh, that's not smart because like if you do school right here, it says you could put it on live on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They just gotta get on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Crystal, I will remind you that everything you're saying is being broadcast live on YouTube. So before you blurt anything out, okay, don't, 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 just don't do it. <laughs> and I'm still working on how to create a private room for you and your attorney to talk. Okay. Wait, so anybody on YouTube can watch this? Yes. <laughs> okay. But, but. It's only they have to watch it live. Oh. It's not recorded and saved on YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> well, actually, it is recorded, but Judge Kim goes in afterwards and he makes it so people can't go in and watch it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Judge Porter, are you ready for the family to come in or? Yes, they can go ahead and come in. <clears throat> Figure out how I got there. Okay. Crystal, once uh, your attorney gets online, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to create a breakout room for the two of y'all to talk. Nobody else will be able to hear what you two are talking about. And that breakout room will not be broadcast on YouTube. Okay. But I don't want to put you in there until she's online and I have a chance to tell her what I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Oh, did you call Kevin? Okay. Okay. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Um, is it translating her? Yes. So if you have a question in Spanish in regards to the legal term, just ask me. Okay. And I'll, and I'll tell you. All righty. Okay. You're going to be here? Yes, I'm going to be just sitting right there. But if you have a question in regards to the legal term, okay. in Spanish, I'll. Because yeah. I don't think Miss Hammer is going to be here physically. So waiting for her to log in. Now, your microphone is turned off and I've got you muted. So when it comes time for that, we'll have to come down there. Fix that for you. <clears throat> hey, Johnny, Johnny.
Judge Porter, I just received an email from defense saying that she's having a little difficulty logging onto the Zoom call, but she is trying. Okay.
Crystal? Yes. You know that they uh, are working on your head, right? Yes. That they sent the pictures and hopefully a doctor's going to review it today. Mm -hmm. Where's the bald spot? It's right here. I have one right here and I have a couple back in the, in the back that are like brand new. I heard he say his whole name. <laughs> that didn't work. Nope. The boy. Good morning, Miss Hamrick. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay, Miss Hamrick? Yes. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Uh, Crystal wants to talk to you privately for just a little bit. So mm -hmm. I'm going to create a breakout room for the two of y'all to talk, okay? Okay. I will let everybody know that this is being broadcast on YouTube. But for the breakout room, um, only Ms. Hamrick and the respondent will be in that room and that will not be broadcast. I'll also tell everybody who might be watching on YouTube that uh, you're free to watch, but you are prohibited from recording uh, this hearing in any shape, form or fashion. Um, failure to abide by this order could result in a finding of either civil or criminal contempt and that could result in a fine or jail time. Okay, um, let's see, somehow this did not work. There we go. Okay, give me just a second. You can I click on it? This is join. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Crystal. Um, you should see a. Never mind. You're in there. Okay. We're going to give them a chance to talk privately for a little bit.
pregunta, señora, sobre algo, señora. ¿Tiene la cosa? ¿Tiene pregunta? A mí no me es que no sé, estoy entre. No sé, entre. Lo que está pasando con mi hija me tiene bien mal, no sé. This is date of birth. That doesn't help me at all. Please, I don't have um, access to it. You can find out if the date of birth. Um, because if this date of birth was yesterday, then that's the person that I rescinded the DTA. Oh, no, no, it's not. Dang. <laughs> okay. But there is a video thing on him from downtown. Okay. They will need the meeting number. Okay. Okay. No, not for the one we're using this morning? No, uh, Mary is. Okay. Okay. Then why don't we try and go ahead and do that at 10 o'clock, assuming we can get this done by 945. Yeah, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll be right back.
generation current. Mira, ustedes los cargos, así usted acepta los cargos, viendo que ella, ella, aquí dice que la carga es porque corrió de los policías, ok, es una clase misdemeanor, y la otra dice que, 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 no, que no dio su nombre, mm. que, dio, que dio otro nombre. ¿Se hizo todas las cargas? Sí, sí, todo se hizo. Ok. También, pues, también él, él debe de saber que ella en la casa como que... Sí, sí, robos. pero digo, él, él no es ahorita por eso. Digo, ah, pero ahorita, okay. ¿usted acepta los cargos? Sí. Sí, estamos aquí por aquí. We're back, Judge Porter. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'll wait on, there's Ms. Samrick. Okay. I'm in here with the parents, getting the parents to sign on the step. And then I'll be right back in the courtroom. We're in the middle of here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, then. I think Judge Kemp's here. Hmm? I think Judge Kemp's here. Right. Okay. All right, Ms. Hamrick and Crystal, did y'all have a chance to talk? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Crystal, before I can continue, mm -hmm. I have to go over several things and it's gonna take a while. Um, because we're doing this by video, so I have to read a lot of stuff to you. Okay. Luckily, you're a very intelligent girl, so it'll be easier for you. Um, first, Ms. Hamrick, I have before me a document titled States Disclosure of Documents, Items. Oh, wait, just a second. Forgot one more thing. All right, we are here in cause number 323 dash one one three three two eight dash two zero in the matter of crystal ruby alvarenga i will let everybody know that this hearing is being broadcast on youtube in accordance with the open provision uh, section of the texas constitution it is anybody who's watching it is forbidden for you to additionally record this hearing in any way, shape, form, or fashion. If you do so, uh, that could subject you to civil and or criminal contempt, meaning a fine or jail time in the Tarrant County Jail. Now, uh, Ms. Hamrick, I have before me a document titled State's Disclosure of Documents, Items, and Information Provided to, it says defendant, but I'm gonna cross that word out and, and write in respondent. Are you satisfied with the discovery provided by the state in this case? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Alvarenga, you have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kilm rather than me, but I have a document signed by your attorney. It is titled, Waiver of a Hearing Before the District Judge. Now you have not signed off on it, so I need to read it to you, okay? It says, I, the juvenile respondent in the above styled and numbered cause, joined by my attorney, do hereby waive my right to a hearing before the district judge, that's Judge Kim, presiding in this court, and I, joined by my attorney, do hereby agree, agree that the hearing may be heard, presided over, and adjudged, and a final disposition made by the juvenile court referee, that's me, duly appointed by the juvenile board of Tarrant County, Texas, under the provisions of section 5410 of the Texas Family Code. And in that in so doing, I state that I do so voluntarily and with full knowledge of my rights in this regard, that I fully understand the possible consequences of waiving said rights to a hearing before the district judge, and that I have been counseled by my attorney. This waiver is signed and submitted on the blank, I'm gonna fill in 15th day of April, 2020. Now, Crystal, 
that essentially means that if you agree to this, that I will hear this case rather than Judge Kim. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to hear your case instead of Judge Kim? Yes, sir. All right. State, are we proceeding on the entirety of the petition? Yes, Your Honor, we are. Is that your understanding, Ms. Hamrick? Yes, Your Honor. All right. <clears throat> now, Ms. Alvarenga, mm -hmm. you have an absolute right under the state of Texas to not say anything at all unless that's what you want to do. We call that the Fifth Amendment right. However, unlike your detention hearings, anything you say during this hearing can be used against you, not just today in today's hearing, but any future hearing, such as if you get in trouble as juvenile again, or even if you get in trouble as an adult. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So if there's something you want to say, I want you to wave your hand so that I know that you want to say something. I will create another breakout room for you and Ms. Hamrick. I will let you talk it over with Ms. Hamrick privately. That way she can advise you on whether or not you really should say it. Mm -hmm. And then when y'all are done, you come back, okay? Yes. Now, our laws also give you the right to have a jury trial. And that would be where six people would be selected from the community. They would come in and they would determine whether or not you actually did what the state has accused you of doing. Mm -hmm. But if this is going to proceed like I think it'll proceed, you're going to give up that right to a jury trial. And there won't be six people sitting in a witness box. And also as part of a jury trial, you could force the prosecutor to call in all the witnesses who might testify against you. You would get to look them in the eyes. I would put them under oath. They would have to swear to tell the truth. And then your attorney, Ms. Hamrick, would get to ask them questions to make sure they're telling the truth. And at the end of everything, those six people would determine whether or not you actually did what the state has accused you of doing as part of a jury trial. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the document before me with two paragraphs on it. The bottom paragraph is titled Waiver of a Jury Trial. It is signed by your attorney, Ms. Hamrick. I need to read it to you now. It says, comes now Crystal Ruby Alvarenga, child in the above entitled and number cause, and her attorney, Melissa Hamrick, in writing and in open court, both having been informed uh, of the understanding of the child's right to a trial by jury and the possible consequences of waiving such right, both now waive the right to a trial by jury. Crystal? Would you rather have a jury trial or would you rather me, Judge Porter, determine everything in this case? Uh, I'd rather you okay. determine everything. All right. <clears throat> now, you understand that if there is an agreement between you and your attorney and the prosecutor about what should happen in this case, mm -hmm. and if I follow that agreement, you give up one more very important right. That's what we call the right to appeal. And that's where a different court located in downtown Fort Worth would look at what we do here today to make sure that what we've done was in compliance with the law. However, if there's a plea agreement today, and if I follow that agreement, you give up your right to appeal. Do you understand that? Um, yeah. Okay. So if there's a plea agreement between you, Ms. Hamrick, and the prosecutor, if I follow it, there won't be an appeal. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Is that what you want to happen? You want me to decide it and you want there to be no appeal. So you're saying if I plead like plead uh, the plea, like if I plead guilty, that another court can look at my case, right? Only if I do not follow the plea agreement. But uh, if I follow the plea agreement, that's this is the end of it. Okay. Yes, do you understand I, that? Yes. Are you good with that? Yes. Okay. 
Now, back to that, that piece of paper with two paragraphs on it. Mm -hmm. The top paragraph is titled Stipulation of Evidence. Let me read it to you. It says, comes now Crystal Ruby Alvarenga, child in the above entitled and number cause, and Melissa Hamrick, her attorney, in writing and in open court, and both having been informed and of and understanding the child's right to present witnesses on, should be her behalf, and to confront and cross-examine adverse witnesses and the possible consequences of waiving such rights, both voluntarily consent to the stipulation of the evidence in this case, and in so doing expressly waive the appearance, confrontation, and cross-examination of witnesses. We further consent to the introduction of testimony by oral stipulation or by affidavits, written statements of witnesses, and any other document documentary evidence. Okay. If this proceeds like I think it's going to proceed, we may only have one or two witnesses to testify. Do you understand that, Crystal? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and because we're in different rooms of the courthouse and you're back in detention and I'm here in the courtroom and your attorney's in her office, you won't necessarily get to be in the same room with any of those witnesses. Do you understand that? Yes. Are you willing to proceed like we're doing now, just on video conference and not be physically present in the same room as any witnesses who might testify? Yes. Ms. Hamrick, do you join in that waiver of her right of direct confrontation? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And Crystal, do you also agree to allow the state to present evidence to me in the form of documents? Um, what does that mean? Well, in a little bit, there may be what's called a social history. And that's kind of like a background biography of you. Mm -hmm. um, and are you willing to allow the state, subject to any objections that Ms. Hamrick might make, are you allow, willing to allow me to consider those types of documents? Uh, so if I say no, that means that you don't get the paper that has all my background in it, right? Well, it just means you're not joining in that. Um, we'll make that call when it comes time because Ms. Hamrick may have some other legal objections to those documents mm -hmm. to protect your rights. And there may, she may have a good legal reason for me not to consider those. And I'll consider that on a case by case basis. Um, can I ask her if I should or not? Yes, yes, you may. Um, I, I, don't, I don't wanna speak for Ms. Hamrick, but I bet she'll say that she will allow, um, she will, if there's a reason I should not consider a specific document, Mm -hmm. that she will make that objection at the time that the document's offered. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, Ms. Hamrick's a really good attorney. She's going to protect your rights. Yes, I know that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Ms., well, do you, what do you think I should do? Should I agree? I think we need to proceed. Okay. Then in that case, yes. Okay. <clears throat> now you understand that by allowing the state to proceed on stipulations, I'm going to ask you in a little bit mm -hmm. about the allegations that are in the state's petition. And if you plead true to those allegations, you understand you're gi actually giving up your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Um, yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, and here we are. We're here to the stipulation of evidence, okay? It's really long, so I need you to be patient with me, okay? I'm going to pause after every paragraph, Crystal, and allow you to ask me any questions you want, okay? Yes, sir. All right, first paragraph. It says, to the honorable judge of said court, may it be agreed and stipulated between the parties in the above styled and numbered cause in which Crystal Ruby Alvarenga is the respondent, the following facts. Paragraph number one. 
if the witness, Santos Ramirez, were in court and testified under oath, they would hand and put you under oath. Okay? Okay. Paragraph number one, under these specific facts. I was born on, and we both know what your birthday is, so I'm not going to read it out loud. And you live in Tarrant County, Texas. Is that true or not true? That you were born in November and you live in Tarrant yes. County, Texas? Okay. Yes. Number two, on or about the second day of March 2020 in Tarrant County, Texas, I did intentionally flee from William Calloway, knowing William Calloway was a peace officer who was attempting to lawfully arrest or detain the respondent. That's you. Okay. Paragraph number three. Such conduct is a class A misdemeanor, a false or fictitious name, namely Aurora Vergas to Ryan Tooker, a person, and, and it says the defendant, it should be the respondent, knew to be a peace officer who had lawfully arrested or detained the respondent and at the time the respondent committed said offense, the defendant should be respondent, was then and there a fugitive from justice. Essentially what that means is you gave a false name to a police officer at a time when there was a directive to apprehend issued for you. Do you understand that paragraph? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you don't feel comfortable answering my questions, Say, I don't feel comfortable, okay? okay? And we will pause the proceedings and I will allow you to talk to Ms. Hamrick, okay? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll go forward. Okay. Now, is it true or not true that on or about March 2nd, 2020 in Tarrant County, Texas, you intentionally fled from a paragraph of the stipulation of evidence? It says, I, Crystal Ruby Avarenga, further agree and stipulate that I am a child in need of rehabilitation or that the protection of the public requires that disposition be made. Okay, that's essentially a plea agreement where you're agreeing to be placed on probation for 14 months and going to Lake Granberry Youth Services. Is that what you wanna do in this, these cases? Uh, no, can I talk to my attorney? Yes, give me just a second and I will create a, break, a breakout room for you. Okay. All right. Are you finding it? No, I don't, we don't see it on here. It's saying leave meeting. It's the only thing it's saying on our screen. Okay. Um, Last time you did it yourself and Arrangement with my PO and my family that I can stay there and I can get out and monitor monitor is both parents at home they have um i would have good um discipline and everything i would be going to school because um i do think i can be i well, think hold on crystal hold on hold, uh, before you say anything else um let me let me talk to both the prosecutor and miss hammer real quick okay it sounds to me based on what crystal has just said to me that she has come up with her own alternative placement possibility and she wants the court to consider that if that is indeed the case then it sounds like there is no longer a plea agreement regarding disposition let me ask the state what is the state's assessment of what has happened and what is their position judge i agree with you it seems like disposition would be contested uh, the state would be fine with proceeding with the adjudication if the respondent's still willing to stipulate to the charged offenses, and then we can proceed after that with a contested disposition hearing. 
All right, Ms. Hamrick, your response on behalf of the respondent. Um, I believe that that is correct. I believe we can proceed and reset the disposition. Okay, so you're you're asking to proceed on adjudication and have the disposition hearing at a later time. Yes, Your Honor. In, in light of the fact that my client has come up with a possible new alternative, no one's had time to check out. That's okay. We, we, we thought we were in agreement. Uh, uh, can Your Honor, may I say something? Uh, not yet, Ms. Cook. Okay. Hold on. Um, uh oh, we just lost Ms. Hamrick. Ms. Hamrick. She's back. All right. You back? Can you hear me okay, Ms. Hamrick? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, I think your internet feed is a little... Yes. Okay. Ms. Farmer, what is the... The Respondents' Council has proposed proceeding on adjudication and resetting the disposition hearing for a later time. What is your response? We have no objection to that, Your Honor. Okay, then sounds like that is going to be in everybody's best interest. Ms. Cook, you had a comment. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so a person called up to the detention facility a couple days ago saying that they wanted Crystal to be released to them. And um, we asked mom if she knew who this person was, and she does not. And I believe that is who Crystal is speaking about. Okay. Uh, well, at this point, I, I can't authorize well, Crystal's, so can Crystal, hold up, hold up. I don't want you to say anything that might get you in trouble, okay? Mm -hmm. Before you say anything, I want you to have a chance to talk it over with Ms. Hamrick before you just blurt something out, because there may be some consequences that you don't know about mm -hmm. to what you say, and I don't want you to say anything that hurts it's your case. General question, sir. Pardon? It's just a general question and comment. Okay, um, well, let me say first in response to what Ms. Cook said, I'm, the law doesn't allow me to authorize your release to anybody that's not a family member, like a parent or guardian, unless your parent or guardian has given permission for that release, or there's a different court proceeding that has allowed me to do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. We can ask my parents if they would be allowed, like, um, willing to agree with it, because I also, I don't want to, like, it. You know, I feel like the goal is to keep, like, put out the the, the juveniles out into the world and out into the um, community to be successful. And I do, I do believe that I can be successful again in the community. And um, if I think I can be successful, I know I can be successful in the community. I don't want to waste the county's money to send me to placement because I do know that that is a lot of money that y'all spend to send a child to go to placement. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to save all of that argument for a different hearing, okay? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to separate everything else right now. Okay, but since my parents are on the um, Zoom uh, call, can you ask them if they were openly willing to um, uh, agree with that? So we can. No, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna consider that today because we're okay. gonna separate the two hearings out, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give your attorney time to investigate your proposal. I'm gonna give the state time to investigate your proposal and I'm gonna give probation the department and your mom time to investigate the proposal. Okay. But we're not, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna hold everybody down to an agreement today when nobody's done their investigation. Does that, is that fair? Okay. All right, okay. So going forward, we're just gonna consider whether or not you did engage in delinquent conduct as alleged. Okay. Are you still willing to go forward on just that part of the hearing? Yes, sir. Okay. So just to recap one more time, is it true or not true that you 
fled from her peace officer on March 2nd. It's true, sir. And is it true or not true that you gave a fake name to a different peace officer? It's true, sir. Okay. Both those offenses under 3802 and 3804 of the Texas Penal Code would constitute misdemeanor offenses under the laws of the state of Texas. Based on the evidence in front of me, oh, Ms. Hamrick, I'm sorry, one more thing. Do you have any reason to believe that your client lacks a factual as well as a rational understanding of the proceedings against her as well as these here, as our proceedings and the charges? No, Your Honor. All right. And Crystal, based on our discussion today, plus we've met before, you're a pretty bright, sophisticated young lady. I concur in your counsel's assessment. I find that you are competent to enter your pleas, and I will find that you did engage in delinquent conduct as alleged in the state's petition in this case, specifically paragraphs one and paragraphs two. Yes, Does either side believe there's any other admonishments or that should be given regarding this case? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. Crystal, that will be the order of the court and that will conclude this hearing. We will reset this uh, a disposition hearing for a later date and Ms. Hamrick will get with the uh, court coordinator to schedule you for a detention hearing um, between now and that disposition hearing, okay? Your Honor, may I real fast? Yes. She's actually due a detention hearing tomorrow. So could we do that right now yes. while mom is here? Yes, yes, we can. We've got plenty of time. Okay. Um, Crystal, you're level 10. This is just a detention hearing. You understand you have the right to have your detention hearing in front of Judge Kim? Yes, sir. You want to have it in front of me instead? Yes, sir. Okay. You also uh, have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. Mm -hmm. Anything you say from this point forward, because I'm actually going to stop the previous hearing. Anything you say from this point forward cannot be used against you at a future hearing at all, unless it's another detention hearing. Mm -hmm. Um uh, you have the right to have this hearing recorded if you want. Otherwise, we'll proceed. You're at level 1-0. Yes, Mom is present. Probation officer is present. Your attorney's present. Uh, what's the state's recommendation? Your Honor, we would recommend that she be detained. We don't believe that there is a super, a suitable supervision for her at home right now. Uh, we don't believe that there's anywhere that she could potentially go where she would be staying out of trouble. And uh, we're also fearful that she'd likely reoffend because the lack of suitable supervision. All right, Ms. Hamrick. Um, if this other family would agree to take her, my client would like to be released. Um, uh, I can't hear you, Ms. Hamrick. Oh, I'm sorry. I said if, if this other family would, would agree to take her in and her mother agrees to it, we would ask at that, at that time that she be released. Okay. Anything else from either side? Nothing further from the state. No, Your Honor. Nothing okay. Nothing further. Um, Crystal, yes. because I know you don't want to obey mom's rules right now, even though you're level 1-0 in the back. It's just that I don't believe that that is a good environment for myself. So I believe that the change of environment with another family, with both parents present, who it is a stable family and a stable home, that I will be successful. And I feel like that would be in my best um, offer. Because even if I would end up to go to placement, I would feel like I should not go back to the same environment. Okay. I'm going to give your attorney a chance to work on uh, that agreement because I'd have to have something in writing from both your mom and this new family. I would need to have it in writing that that's an okay thing before I could even consider it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to give Ms. Hamrick and your mom a chance to work on that. And if they get all the pieces in place, Ms. Hamrick knows that she can ask for a, a earlier detention hearing mm -hmm. and we'll get that going, okay? Yes, sir. But for now, I'm gonna order that you be detained. Yes, sir. All right, anything else from anybody? 
No, Your Honor. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. You don't you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. I I know exactly what you're thinking. Your your microphone is off, mine isn't. Golly, what she could do if she just did the right amount of questions. She's smart. She... Yeah, we've there have been about four like that, but she she's only the second girl who's like she got it, but it's dangerous because she knows she's got it. Yeah, mm, mm, mm. you know, if she would just channel herself appropriately, she would, she could take Glenn Whitley's job in 10 years. All right, thank you so much. No. Yes. And then I can go, I can go to Judge Cherry's courtroom. Or I can go, Judge Cherry's not here. Because the echo from the two computers. Yeah, that's the reason. Um, and this, by having defense attorneys in here and making us move, that means, or making me move, because I'm the only one who's moved, that means it's consistent for them. Mm -hmm. So, I don't care. Um, but Terry shouldn't be here today? Or? She's not going to be. So, I'll just go and lick everything on her <laughs> bench. Um, can you do me? Can you do me? Oh no, he did not. That chili. Um, if you would take that to Janet Farmer in her office, she's the new prosecutor. Oh yeah. Okay. And yeah. Um, thank you so much. And then I'm going to go ahead. We're going to do an inmate at 10 o'clock. An inmate is in here. Good job. As are we all. Okay. That, that was painful. That was just downright painful. Imagine what it would have been like if Crystal wasn't so sophisticated. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Um, that is off. This one's still on. If if they aren't ready to go right at ten fifteen, at, because it's at ten twenty five, I'm cutting them off. I don't care if we're done or not with at the jail. Sorry, then they can sit around and wait until the. Well, okay, then let's do it at 10 15 because I can make this real quick. You're charged with murder. You're an adult. You're downtown. I'm not.
you know, I this is real lucky at Greg County. Um, of course, I always had an ace in the hole because I grew up with the San Diego Sheriff and we started kindergarten together. We graduated from college together. So, uh, nobody would, um, I, everybody knew that and so they didn't, they didn't mess with me. But, Proactive in population management, with the DA's office so well, we never had any of these problems that y'all have. Yeah. And I just I didn't realize at the time, but I just assumed everybody worked on it. Everybody was a team. What's her face? Your friend? What's her face? Have you seen? Oh, we know where Alex is here. here but we know he's here because okay where is I 
screen. Oh, no, no, no. I've got the screen sharing. Yeah, right. In the middle of it, Crystal in the responding to the placement, so it turned into a non quick login. So it was, yeah. Responded, came up with their own idea for she would like to go to a different family. They would allow her to. It's okay for probation to go to a home with a different family. Well, we're going to reset this position for a different. We did a June 1st. I'm going to give your, everybody time to investigate. I'm going to do the same. Mm -hmm. I know that's the way this works. I've always done it. But I'm a student fan. Like, I think there's so much information we gather. I think I've come up with an idea for their grading. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm bringing it to you in advance because we might get sued over it. There's a country called Little Graph that does posters of different classics works of literature mm -hmm. and the designs are created using the words mm -hmm. of the um, so hamlet it would be the soliloquy and the image is made out of carving out the words mm -hmm. Hello? yes Hello? no no but have it as one of many yeah. different ones works of literature mm -hmm. so and so under the ten commandments <clears throat> it's not really an endorsement Here's my thing. Sorry. So this is my understanding of the capital trap for the Me personally, <laughs> so what, what the law says. The law says that you're going to do anything that is completely not secular, right? So the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, you have to have something religious, another religion, and something non secular. Right? So, like my Christmas decoration. Right? Yeah. So, so that's that's the law. So you have to be mindful of that. So the Bible maybe has to another the Torah. Okay, because they have one of the Torah. They don't have one of the Quran. And I, at least one other religion and something not. And I have read the Torah because I'm only doing books that I've actually read. But I have read. So me personally, I have no biblical reference. My personal thought is when people walk in the courtroom, there's only one law. Mm -hmm. And the payment is a different set of laws. Just like I wouldn't put him in code or the Mayflower Compact or anything else like that. Right? So I just don't. I think there should only be one law that's in this courtroom. So that's my personal philosophy. So yeah, I, mean, I don't I have no problem with that. As long as you follow that. Yeah, yeah and that's the reason for the. Laws and great expectations make them available. How much are those? Uh, depending on the size, the size I'm looking at is going to be about 70 bucks. Yeah. So the right. Yeah. yeah. But then by the time you tack on framing and everything else, it's pushing four figures probably. I need to talk to Ray again about the framing. Okay. Reproduction of the Travis Letter Texas Declaration Constitution, USDOI Constitution, like, um, like all these different things, and they're being framed. I think I'm just going to take a picture. Uh, mm. I'll see about the court real quick. I don't know how much of the jury room, my little trophy room. So you already have the declaration in the Texas Constitution. I have all the documents, so it's one document. Okay, which which Texas Constitution? 1876 or Republic? Republic. Republic. Okay.
was going to tell you, but everyone else, including um, that go out in the spring and that's one of those things I was going to do spring I knew my son on Texas when I was out in DC um, I made a point of once a month going out to one of the Civil War battlefields um, while I was in the area so drove up to Gettysburg one day been to Manassas and Tehum but Gettysburg. Have you ever been to Gettysburg? No. It, it, I, the only way I can describe it is the same feeling I got there is what I got at Mount Rushmore. It is just a sacred place. Mm -hmm. There is a, there's just a, God is there. I, I can't explain it. More so at Gettysburg and Mount Rushmore. Arlington, I'm just looking at, at the sea of graves and I'm thinking about the sacrifice of our forebears. But it's not the overwhelming sense of God is in this place. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. I was going to assume that I know about my physical weather. Because I know they're out there. I would just like to stay there with them. Oh, yeah. We're out there. I got it's interesting. Okay. And I'm going to put up in Judge Terry's courtroom, which is not an echo. So the defense attorney. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Hands full. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Here, I'm going to lick every solid surface up here. You tell her I said that. Watch her start twitching. Oh, but she doesn't, she doesn't have a cord. Yes, she does. There it is. It's, like... it's funny. I say that because... I've been in the hospital with food poisoning, so I'm really, really careful about all of that kind of stuff. Like when I cook, 
um, like if I'm baking or something, I'm going to wash my hands every time I touch an egg. Every single time. So I'm real careful about that. I notice it in other people. I'm like, I kid, I would not, not do that. There we go. Okay, we have uh, eight detention hearings, plus we have one from the county jail at 10 15. Now, are the computer set up? Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's the reason why I'm in here. Yeah. Because that's the echo. Can you hear me? Okay. This mic is alive, so anything you say is being broadcast on YouTube. to get one thing I'm going to need. So your job is to keep me safe. All right, Ms. Lederman, you get background of the day award. <laughs> I don't know how to change it. Why would you? <laughs> yeah, really. I was like, I'm at home and I can just pretend to be at the beach. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> I've got another Zoom that was supposed to have started an hour ago. It still hasn't started, but it's on my other iPhone. Okay. I think mom should be there. Mom was there all day yesterday. Yeah, she texted me that she was um, in the lobby and she said, I'm here in the back lobby. Okay. 
And Ms. Lederman, you represent Mr. Willis, is that correct? That is correct. And they should okay. have made him available at the jail. Yeah, we're trying to get that one done at 10.15 rather than 10.30. Okay. Yeah, Judge Porter's on here. Because oh, I have tape on my <laughs> look. Look, at, they can't see me because my husband told me to take that. Miss Guerrero, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Okay. You can see me now? There you go. <laughs> How do I change the view? How do I make it so I have the gallery? How do I make that bigger? <clears throat> Ms. Lederman, do you know which prosecutor is going to be handling your detention hearing? It should be Kevin Baumberg. He's okay. the prosecutor on the case. Okay. Let me go make sure that he's got that information so we can get that started on time. Yeah. Because I really want that one done and over with. I'm going to remind everybody that this is being broadcast on YouTube. Uh, you are hereby prohibited from recording any of these hearings in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Doing so could subject you to civil and or criminal contempt. Um, but I'll remind the parties that this is being broadcast. So uh, be careful what you say. I just been scared of <laughs> No, 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 no. You are right on time. Back in the small courtroom, are you uh, Erica Flarica? Yes, sir. Erica Flynn. Uh, Okay. Okay. Last name is Flint, F L I N T? Yes, sir. Okay. Just making sure. We're just waiting for the Tarrant County Jail to get online with us. Yes, sir. Kevin's not on yet. But, but I can do this without Kevin. I can't do this without the jail. Um, that might be a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let me 
you should have gotten the feedback now. Yeah. And Hmm. Well, I don't want to give you any feedback. You will if you're. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to turn yours off. No, you need to turn it off. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, he's a turning there. Miss Bobby here. No, no, no. <laughs> Did you have a movie? No. <laughs> he's trying. <laughs> I can hear Mr. Bamberg. There's Kevin. I don't see Kevin. There he is. And he's gone. There he is. Okay. Okay. Okay, sure. Kevin. Now we're just waiting on the jail. Pia's case uh, is, are you going to be hearing that or Judge Terry? Uh, I'll be hearing the detention hearings today and we're going to start with Willis. Okay, that, that's ours. Um, I'm going to hop off after that one, but I do have, um, if you're interested, um, I was talking with Clayton Howard and he doesn't have access to the adult reports. So if the court would like a brief summary, I can give you a brief summary of his adult charges if needed. That that's fine. Miss Ms. Lederman is here to contradict and object and everything else she wants to do. Although I do have a copy of the offense report. The adult one, Judge. Uh no. Well, no, it is not. It is not the adult, new adult one. Yeah. And okay. That, yeah. Give me earphones. Mr. Howard said he didn't have access to those, so he couldn't include a summary in there. Right. Looks like we've got the sheriff office coming online. Hey, Mr. Willis, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. My name is Judge Porter. A couple of things. You have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. If there's something you want to say, I suggest you wave your hand like I'm doing right now. That will let me know that there's something you want to say. Don't just blurt it out. I will give you a chance. I will create a breakout room just for you and your attorney only to talk in privately. That way you can talk it over with your attorney before you blurt anything out. <laughs> she can advise you on whether or not you should actually say it. And then when y'all are done talking, then y'all come back into the main room. But don't say anything um, unless you've talked it over with your attorney first, okay? Yes, sir. 
Second thing, you have the right to have this hearing recorded and you have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim. If you want either of those things, Ms. Lederman will let me know, okay? Do yes, you sir. see your attorney, Ms. Lederman? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. What brings Mr. Willis to court today? Uh, Judge, we requested a, um, a hearing on his detention. He's currently detained um, also in the adult system, but obviously we can't work on a bond there. We have to kind of do, do it in both places. Okay. So we, and Mr. Howard, um, is Mr. Willis currently on probation? Yes, yes, he is. He's currently What's on that offense. Uh, theft of a prop, uh, excuse me, theft of firearm. Okay. And when was he placed on probation for that offense? Uh, 5 7 uh, 2019. Okay. And when was his probation scheduled to expire on that case? 5-7-2020. Okay. And he has picked up a new charge that result, resulted in him being placed in the Tarrant County Jail? Yes. What is that new offense? Uh, Your Honor, uh, currently from what I know is alleged to be a murder charge. Uh, I've never seen the actual report. All right. I'm going to ask the prosecutor, what is the state's position regarding whether or not uh, the juvenile should be detained or released. And if I'll also invite the state to provide a brief summary of his understanding of the murder charge. Sure. Thank you, Judge. Um, the murder charge was alleged to have been committed on January 9th of this year. Um, he has a pending misdemeanor evading from February 17th. So he was not apprehended uh, during the course of the murder charge. But the murder charge having occurred on January 9th um, appears by allegation to be a, a rival gang shooting. Mr. Willis claims BOE, which is a crip set known as Brothers Over Everything. Um, he was riding with uh, another documented crip and there are there is another charged adult offender as well for this murder. Um, and it was, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, what did you say? I thought I heard. Um, anyway, so he was a passenger in the vehicle uh, during what essentially was a shooting at in front of a residence. Um, one person uh, is deceased as a result of their actions in January. Um, and I believe he was arrested subsequently on the evading arrest charge uh, in February for both that offense and the murder. Both, uh, I'm sorry. The evading is a misdemeanor. The murder case was presented to a grand jury just recently, and they did present or return an indictment on the murder charge, and those charges are currently pending, um, I believe, with the gang unit in the 396 District Court. The state would ask that the court uh, continue to detain Mr. Willis. All right. Counsel, your response. Judge, he has a bond on the adult court case. So my issue is if he is able to make the bond on the adult court, obviously there'll be uh, restrictions and conditions on the adult bond and he will be closely monitored on that bond more so than this case that juvenile is a state jail. So when you look at the offense that he is on probation for, he's almost due to expire on his juvenile probation. He is no longer a juvenile. And because of the length of time that it's going to take to adjudicate his adult case, he's going to spend more time on an adult bond than he would ever on the juvenile state jail offense. So we're requesting that he be released, obviously with conditions that would run concurrent with any conditions of an adult bond should he be able to make the adult bond. But obviously while this is a detention, we can't even move forward on an adult proceeding because of the DTA at juvenile. Okay. Any rebuttal from the state? 
Um, I might note that the bond on the murder case is set at $250,000. Ms. Letterman, I'm sorry, just to clarify, has he already posted that bond or no? No, we're scheduled to have a bond reduction hearing, but there, because of the two different holds, it's kind of which comes first, the chicken or the egg. So yeah. we're having the juvenile first, so then we can reset um, the bond hearing on, it's out of Judge Gallagher's court. So he is doing bond hearings, but we, I felt it was more prudent to have this issue resolved. So then when we go forward with the hearing with Judge Gallagher, we'd have a little bit more information about what holds or what conditions he'll have out of this hearing. So Judge's rebuttal, I'm sorry. Uh, I would say that the safety of the community here is at stake in our concern, considering the underlying offense of the theft of firearm um, the firearm being involved in the murder case, and then um, in February running from the police, all, as well as being associated with and documented gang member, um, and associated with other documented gang members, this being a rival gang shooting, we believe. So we believe the safety community is at risk here and ask for detention. Thank you. All right. Based on the evidence before me, um, I'm going to order that the respondent be detained. Uh, I believe he's a danger to himself or to the community if released at this time. That'll be the order of the court. Thank you both. Thank you. Ridiculous. No, that's ridiculous. The whole courthouse is ridiculous. No, that's, that's still ridiculous. Everybody sitting there is a liar. Oh, 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 no, I don't, but Bernie's got it. Judge, may you be excused? Yes, thank you, Ms. Lederman. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Okay, uh, are you, here, I can give it to you, hold on. Let me know when you're ready. Well, I'll say I can give it to you. Okay, here we go. 935 five, seven, nine, five, eight, five, four, nine. Okay. Yes. Yes. And should I be setting that for a motion to modify? Yes, if you want to do that, um, I'll leave that up to uh, the attorneys if they want. But yeah, go ahead and set it. Okay. All right, got it. Thanks. All right. It's almost 10 30. And so, who uh, is Mr. Ferguson here yet? I'm here, Judge. I don't see Mr. Ferguson. Oh, I thought you said Berger. No, I'm looking for Taylor. Okay. Um, but, and we're also waiting for juvenile detention to log in. Zero seven five four at the front console. There, here comes Steve now. Hey, there's no other way. Okay. I don't know. Yes. There comes Taylor.
All right, Mr. Carroll, can you hear me? Yeah, is my mom here? Uh, I'm not showing anybody in the that back courtroom yet, but they're going to go check. She is in the building. Please let me go. Before we get started, Mr. Carroll, my name is Judge Porter. You have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim. You also have the right to have this hearing recorded. If uh, your attorney is Mr. Ferguson, if he wants either of those things, he'll let me know. Okay. Um, you, Ms. Hardin? Yes, yes, sir. All right. Ms. Hardin, can I get you to pull your chair up? closer to the table there you go and that way you'll be a little closer to the microphone in case we anybody has any questions for you okay all right Ms. Guerrero what brings Mr. Carroll to court today yes Judge he was brought in on a directive that was issued um, in September by Judge Smith because he failed to appear at North Texas Hospital as scheduled Ms. Guerrero, your, your microphone cut off. It cut off? Okay. There we go. Okay. He was brought in on a directive issued by Judge Smith, Judge, because he failed to appear in, in North Texas Hospital. Um, it was ordered in September of last year. And so he's been basically absent since then? Correct. Until he came in um, in March, March 30th. Okay. Mom, what happened? How come he didn't make it to the hospital? As uh, he explained to me, he was, um, his girl was having a baby at the time. So he really wasn't trying to come in, but he wanted to come in, but he wanted to see his baby being born at the time. And that's the time that his baby was being born. Yeah, but mom, it was your responsibility to get him to the hospital. Yeah, and now I'm working on him getting an MHMR as we're doing that right now. Okay. Yeah. Um. Ms. Farmer, what, oh, Ms. Farmer, your microphone's not on. There we go. Ms. Farmer, what says the state? Our only worry, Judge, would be that he would have gone given the fact that uh, his history of failing to report. Okay, Mr. Ferguson. Yes, Judge, sorry, I, my computer was acting up, so I had to log off and log back on. Um, the, the issue with Eric, and this might've already been said, I missed the first part. Um, you know, he's unfit to proceed and he's had this order to go to the North Texas hospital for 90 day commitment, you know, evaluation and treatment, but he turns 18 in less in less than a month. And my reading of the statute is because this is a non determinate sentence offense. He's, he just, his case has to be dropped at 18. I, I don't see any other way. Um, that's the way I read the statute is that the jurisdiction ends at the age of 18 because he's never been adjudicated of anything. Nothing's... And so we're, we're waiting to send him to the state hospital. But the reality is he's not gonna be able to do his 90 days because it, in less than 30 days, he turns 18 and the case is over. And I, I had emailed Andy Smith sort of outlining that that's my interpretation of the law, but I never heard anything back. And so, um, so I'm sorry, I, I just to pull up the statute because the statute that handles this, in my understanding, is uh, um, sorry, my computer's acting up again 55, 5519 of the family code covers when you someone who's unfit to proceed and turns 18 is automatically transferred to adult court if it's a determinate sentence 
offense. But if it's one that's not eligible for determined sentence, I think the case is just over. Over. That's what I got too. And so what is your response uh, to the prosecutor's argument that if he were released today, he would likely abscond from the jurisdiction of the court? Well, you know, the, the hospital has said that they he's on the list to be admitted, but they've minimized who they're taking due to the COVID-19. And again, he's going to expire in 30 days anyway. So the reality is this is almost academic. I mean, he's not going to be restored in time for the case to be resolved. So realistically, it's just either housing him here in the detention center for the next until his birthday, which is May the 10th, I believe, or send him home on a monitor because on May the 10th, this is over. I, I, I don't know any other option. Okay, rebuttal from the state. Your Honor, I believe we still, I, I understand defense counsel's argument, but there are still, um, I'm not the assigned prosecutor in this case, but it does seem there's still a small window. That window of time is small. However, there's still um, a few days for Andy Smith to do something with the case if that's what she's planning on doing. Our fear would be that if the court were to release the respondent, he would abscond and we, the state would not be able to uh, handle the case any further once he absconds. All right, uh, Mr. Carroll. Yes, sir. Mr. Carroll, um, I believe that if you were released today, you'd likely abscond from the jurisdiction of the court. And so on that basis, I'm gonna order that you be detained. Why? Why? Because no. if I were to release him today, uh -huh. He would likely leave the jurisdiction of the court based on his past behavior. Because I would. That's going to be the order of the court. Thank you, Judge. Thank Felicia, you. will you have her mom just call me? Have his mom call me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are you Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. All right. Wait just a second. We're going to let Ms. Jackson get set up. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. She's there. All right, Ms. Jackson, if you'll take a seat in front of the computer. I'm not at the courthouse. I'm on a Zoom call from home. Oh, okay. Uh, can you see her, Judge? I can now. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. All right, Mr. Jackson, my name is Judge Porter. You have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim rather than me. You also... Uh, have the right to have this hearing recorded. If you want either of those things, Mr. Hall will let me know. I have to admonish you that you have the right to remain silent, not say anything at all, unless that's what you want to do. Yes. If there is something you want to say to the court, I want you to wave your hand like this, get my attention, but don't just blurt it out. Okay. I will create a separate private breakout room for you and your attorney to talk about what you want to say that way your attorney knows what you want to say before you say it, and he can advise you whether or not you should actually say it, okay? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Young, what brings... Yes. Pardon? No, I just said yes. 
Uh, okay, Ms. Young, what brings Mr. Jackson to court today? Good morning, Judge. Uh, Jaden uh, was re-referred uh, to the department on the 28th uh, based off of a directive to apprehend that was issued by the department. He had previously been over uh, at TYRC uh, seeking treatment when uh, he and uh, other peers uh, absconded from the facility uh, by way of uh, taking uh, a staff member's uh, vehicle uh, without permission and they went on a wall uh, and that facilitated uh, the progress report to the court uh, for his apprehension. Uh, previous to that, uh, he had been on supervision uh, for uh, several counts uh, uh, of a burglary of uh, habitation uh, with the department. Uh, since then, uh, we have submitted him uh, for a psychological evaluation uh, and have been awaiting uh, those results. Uh, that evaluation uh, was uh, completed on the 7th, and then we received the uh, results on the 14th, and now we have him awaiting uh, a staffing on the 20th. All right. What says the state? The state would like him to be detained based on the fact that he's likely to abscond again. Okay. Is everybody reconnecting? Anybody who can hear me? Ms. Jackson, can you hear me? I can, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Sorry, my my internet connection failed and it's reconnecting real quick. So give me just a second. No problem. <coughs> okay, Mr. Jackson, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. And Ms. Young, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Ms. Farmer, can you hear me? Yes, Judge. And Mr. Hall? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Ms. Young, I, I, the last thing I heard you say was the staffing has been scheduled for the 20th, and then I asked Ms. Farmer for the state's recommendation. Yes, Your Honor. We would like him to be detained. Our fear would be that he would abscond again as he did before. All right, Mr. Hall. Judge, I've talked to mom several times. Um, she understands he needs to, you know, get some help with the drug use and stuff. She would like him to be placed somewhere where he can't just leave like he did at the last one and get in more trouble. Um, and also, if since they're not taking people right now because of the COVID virus, she would like him to come home on a monitor until, you know, they open it back up where he could get in another rehab facility. Ms. Jackson, is that correct that you want your son to come home? I would be fine with him coming home with the understanding that he would have to be on a monitor. And I would, I would put in the request that he would not actually be released until Monday because that would give me time to get his uh, doctors and his therapist um, scheduled back for him to immediately start seeing them again. Okay. Ms. Young, what is Mr. Jackson's level in the back? He's actually level two. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, then here's what we're going to do. Um, Mr. Jackson, you and I have had this discussion before, haven't we? Yes, sir. What did I tell you last time? I don't, I don't think I never had uh, you before. I've only yeah, had you have. Because I, I, I remember, I remember you and your mom. I don't remember. Okay. Last time we said that I need you to get to level one o oh, before yes, I can consider you to go home. Okay. Yes, sir. So here's what we're going to do. Um, it concerns me greatly that that you just go joyriding out of TORC, and but 
And so that gives me pause that you can behave in the community. But right now, I also believe that it's better for you with all this stuff going on to be home with your mom. Yes, sir. So here's what we're going to do. You need to get to level 1-0. And you yes, need sir. to maintain level 1-0 for seven days. No, you're at 2-0 right now. You yes, need to get down to level 1. Okay. Maintain it for seven days. And then I will let you go home on an electronic monitor. Yes, sir. That gives your mom time to start scheduling those doctor visits for two weeks from now. Does that make sense, mom? Yes, sir. So, Ms. Young, yes. you can probably get to level 1-0 by what, Saturday or Sunday? He may be able to, but I think that Jaden realizes, too, that it's it's going to be sternly uh, contingent upon uh, his own individual personal behavior. Yes, ma'am. You are correct. Did you hear that, Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. I feel, I believe I can do it. I've done it before. Okay. You got to get there. You got to maintain it for seven days. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'll let you go home on the electronic monitor. And that gives your mom plenty of time to schedule doctor's visits and everything else for about two weeks from now in hopes that by uh, a week from this come Monday, you'll be going home on a monitor, okay? Yes, sir. But for right now, I'm gonna order that you be detained. Yes, sir. All right, thanks y'all. Thank, Thank you, Jess. Miss Young, am I good to leave? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you, Miss Jackson. No problem. Thank you. All right, Ms. Maldonado, you were there, now you're gone. Hold on. All right. Can you hear me okay, Ms. Maldonado? Yes, sir. My name is Judge Porter. You have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim. You also have the right to have this hearing recorded. If you want either of those things, your attorney, Mr. Hall, who's also here, will let me know. Ms. Maldonado, you have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. If there is something you want to say, I want you to wave your hand like this at me to get my attention, okay? Yes, sir. Don't just blurt it out. What I will do, if there's something you want to say, wave your hand like this. I will create a separate, special breakout room just for you and your attorney. Y'all will go in that separate breakout room and talk it over. That way he knows what you're going to say before you just blurt it out and he can advise you on whether or not you should actually say it. Because sometimes there's some things you shouldn't say, even if you want to say them, because they might hurt you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Is Mr. Mitchell here? There you are. Yes. Uh, what here. brings Ms. Maldonado to court today? Uh, she was referred to custody on March 28th on a that was issued after she failed. She refused to charge her EM monitor when it was on dead status. Um, and she had been uh, having issues with the monitor for a while. Uh, she was uh, had several recorded leaves. She had, she had was warned several times to charge her monitor, which she refused to do regularly as she was spoke, as she was uh, instructed to. On this particular day, on the twenty eighth. She All right, hold up just a second, okay. Mr. Mitchell. I lost Ms. Maldonado. Okay, they're back. Okay, you may continue. Okay, on this particular night on the 28th, uh, when her monitor was dead, 
And uh, she refused to call. Well, she got a call from detention staff instructing her to charge her monitor. She refused to do it. I called her house and instructed her to charge her monitor and she refused to do it. And while I was on the phone with her and her grandmother, she was making threats toward her grandmother. She had an initial detention hearing on March 31st in front of Judge Kim and she was ordered detained. Uh, a VOCO technical was filed and she was ordered detained pending the, uh, pending the DA's review of that and also a psychological evaluation and a resource staffing. The resource staffing, I mean, the uh, psychological was conducted on April the 4th and the results came back earlier this week and her resource staffing is scheduled for this Friday, April the 17th at 9 a.m. Okay. What's this the state? Ms. Farmer, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, Judge, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, what's this the state? Yes, Judge. Based on her behavior uh, while being on her EM and her violations, we would like her to be detained. Her resource staffing is coming up here pretty soon. We don't uh, believe that we believe that it's a possibility that she could abscond and also uh, believe that she could be a danger to herself. All right, Mr. Hall. Judge, I've talked to her a couple of times. She's wanting to get another <laughs> shot at being on probation. She didn't take it serious at first. And I'd ask that she be released so she can show the court that she can abide by the conditions of her probation. Mom. <laughs> Um, just a second. Are you Miss Sandoval? Yes, sir. What do you think about having your daughter come home? Mm -hmm. Or what does what does grandmother think you, about sir. about Miranda coming home? Uh, I think all these days that she's been here, sir. I think she's already got the hint that this is not a play for her to be, you know, messing around. And she's, uh, I know she'll be willing to do what she needs to do and have that monitor and all that. So I'm, I'm sure that she'll do good this time. How old is she? 14. Okay. And who else is in the home to watch over her it's me, the grandma, her mom, and uh, she's got three little ones, three, uh, three little brothers and sisters. And are y'all working right now? Or are y'all at home full time? I'm, I'm disabled, sir. I'm, I'm there home full time. And Patty, she, she's applying for jobs. Okay, you heard the probation officer uh, say that there's an allegation that Miranda threatened you. Do you feel safe having her come home? I think I do, sir. Well, you think you do or you do? I do. Okay. I, I do. I've, I've had a long talk with her and he has apologized and, and uh, I think she'll do okay. All right. Miranda, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. You're level 1-0 in the back right now, correct? Yes, sir. If I were to release you today, can you maintain level 1-0 at home? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there something do you want to talk about with your attorney privately? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Hall. <laughs> Give me just a second. All I do is click join. We're going to give them a couple of minutes to talk privately.
or not? Okay. So then I have two requests. The three. Okay. Okay. Well, but it was didn't work. Didn't come in contact with. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That's two weeks from now. It's in Mr. Jackson. He's got to get the level one out first. So he he can do it. Mr. Ray was having trouble getting out of the breakout room, Judge. Oh, okay. I tried to tell him to what to click on, so hopefully he figures it out. Let's see if I can kick him out myself. That's what I was wondering. Can you close it? Well. He's, he's out now. Okay. All right. Mr. Hall, did you and um, Mr. Ms. Maldonado have a chance to confer? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll let you speak on her behalf first, and then I'll ask if she wants to say anything. She was just willing to do drug tests or whatever she needs to do to be able to go home. Okay. Anything else from either side? No, no, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Maldonado, um, I think you have a good home to go to. Um, I expect you to maintain level 1 at home. I am going to release you today on the monitor. Yes, sir. It is your responsibility to make sure it's continuously charged up like it's supposed to be. Yes, sir. The next time I get a report from either the electronic monitor people or Mr. Mitchell, that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. It's not going to be a mere 10 days that you spend in detention. Yes, sir. You understand yes, what's expected of you? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Berger still here? Yes. I hear you. There you are. I just didn't see you. Okay. Morning, Judge. Morning. I just got waiting back that the family is not going to be there. All right. Okay. Are you Mr. Newton? Yes, sir. All right. My name is Judge Porter. You have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim. You also have the right to have this hearing recorded. If you want either of those things, your attorney, Mr. Berger, will let me know. Um, this is a detention hearing to determine whether you should re be released from juvenile detention or remain back in the back. You have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. If there is something you want to say before you blurt it out, I want you to wave your hand like this. Get my attention and I will create a separate online breakout room for just you and your attorney. That way y'all can talk over what you want to say before you say it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't want you to blurt out anything that might hurt you. You understand that? Yes, sir. We good to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Turner Hill, what brings Mr. Newton to court today? Uh, Braylon was referred in on March the 31st. It was a DTA issued by the court for an EMU removal um, on March the 28th at about 9.35 p.m. The EM office contacted Braylon's stepmom and she advised that Braylon had cut off his EM and left the home. So a DTA was issued and he was located at his aunt's house on March the 29th. He is pending um, the offense of unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, which occurred on February the 6th where he allegedly um, took his stepmother's vehicle around 1 or 9 a.m. without permission. Uh, the At police what time? To recover the car. However, it was um, wrecked whenever they recovered it and it was abandoned as well. And that occurred around 1 9 in the morning? Yes, sir, whenever he took the vehicle. Okay. 
What says the state? Based on the fact that he has cut off his EM before, Your Honor, we believe that if he would be released, that nothing's stopping him from doing it again. So we would ask that he be detained so he does not abscond. All right. Uh, Mr. Berger, does uh, Mr. Newton have a family, parent, or present at the court today? Do you know? Uh, I just received a text that the, uh, the family was not present in the courtroom. Uh, and I do know that... Uh, the stepmother is very insistent that he not come home. Uh, I discussed that with Mr. Newton this morning. Uh, his mother is not a suitable option either, as she currently is uh, living with friends. Um, and there is a CPS history as well. All right. Uh, anything else from either side? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Defer to the court. All right. Mr. Newton, at this time, I believe that if I were to release you, you'd be a danger to yourself or others because you cut off your monitor before. So I'm going to order that you be detained. All right. Yes, sir. Get to level one out, maintain level one oh in the back and it'll give me a good reason to reconsider releasing you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Thank you. Am I excused? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Thank you, Judge. How many times have you <laughs> Is this the fifth one? <laughs> Forgotten the time? <laughs> That's not the only reason. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Is Miss Hawthorne here? No, Your Honor. I don't know. Okay. I think she is. Okay. Uh oh, we lost juvenile. Oh wait, there. Okay. You, Mr. Salazar. I'm Park, Lewis Park. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I was reading the wrong line. Sorry about that, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker, my name is Judge Porter. You have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim. You also have the right to have this hearing recorded. If you want either of those things, Mr. Hall will let me know. You have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. If there is something you want to say, don't just blurt it out, okay? Yes, sir. Instead, I want you to wave your hand like this. I will create a separate... Uh, breakout room online for just you and your attorney to meet and talk. That way y'all can talk about what you want to say before you blurt it out and he can advise you on whether or not you should actually say it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Um, Ms. Thomas, what yes. brings Mr. Parker to court today? Your Honor, um, Lewis was referred on March 27th for um, EM removal and two additional charges of uh, failure to ID and unlaw unlawful carrying of a weapon. While patrolling, four police officers noticed two males walking. Uh, both subjects had a blue latex glove on their right hand only. Officer turned on his spotlights and detained both subjects. The individual in the hoodie identified himself as Brendan Bagley, date of birth, uh, March 1st, 2002. It was later discovered the subject's true identity was Lewis Calvin Parker III, a documented 300 Crip gang member. Um, when the individuals were searched, officers found a nine millimeter magazine to a gun in the pants of the companion, Leroy Alston, and the matching firearm in Lewis's uh, underwear. The firearm was confirmed to be stolen out of Grand Prairie on June 3rd of 2019 and was loaded with a round in the chamber. Lewis is also currently pending a uh, capital murder charge as well as aggravated robbery and burglary of a habitation. And Your Honor, he's also on the waiting list for Mejia State School. He's previously been found unfit to proceed. Um, and the availability of that bed at Mejia is June 2nd. All right, Mr. Hall, 
What do you have to say on behalf of the respondent? Um, Judge, he's wanting to go home. I'm, his mom's not available right now, but she's willing to come get him if he's released. Um, okay, just a second, Mr. Hall. Um, we've got a lady who's watching it wearing a, a yellow headwear. That may be her. <laughs> okay. Um, are you Miss Hawthorne? Yes, I am. Got okay. It. Mr. Hall, Miss Hawthorne is on the line. Okay. Uh, so uh, do you want to ask her any questions? Hi, Mr. Uh, hello. Hi, Mr. Uh, she's willing to take him home if he's released. Yes, I am. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Thomas, is he currently on probation? Yeah, he was on probation and um, there's a, v, a VOCO new offense that's, that's been filed. Your Honor, this offense took place in May of 2018, the capital murder charge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he's on probation for aggravated robbery? He was on probation for, uh, let's see, burglary of a motor vehicle. Okay. Criminal mischief. Yes. Okay. Anything else from either side? No, Judge. Your Honor, we would be concerned with the safety of the community and ask that he be detained. Okay. Um, Mr. Parker, it concerns me greatly uh, at eight in the morning that you're out walking around with a handgun um, and you're already on probation for a felony. So I believe that if I were to release you today, you'd be a danger to yourself or to the community if released. So I'm gonna order that you be detained. Yes, sir. All right. That can be the order of the court. Thank you. Now you're Mr. Salazar, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to wait and see if a parent or guardian shows up. Okay. While we're checking on that, um, Mr. Salazar, my name is Judge Porter. We've met before. Uh, you have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all, unless that's what you want to do. If there is something you want to say, don't just blurt it out, okay? Sure. Instead, I want you to wave your hand like this. Get my attention. Mm -hmm. I will create a special online breakout room just for you and your attorney. That way you and your attorney can discuss what you want to say, and it will be private, just the two of y'all. And that way he can advise you on whether or not you should actually say it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Okay, and this is just a detention hearing to determine whether you should remain in the back or be released and go home. Mm -hmm. You have the right to have this hearing recorded and you have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim. If you want either of those things, your attorney, Mr. Hall, will let me know, okay? All right, um, Ms. Guerrero, are you back? Yes, you yes. are. What brings Mr. Salazar to court today? Yes, Judge, the, um, all, the police was called out yesterday at 2157 hours to a domestic call at the house. It seems that Joel hit his father with a wooden stick. Um, it seems that father was questioning him about him yelling at stepmother, which ensued an argument. And Joel at that time threatened to heal 
hit his dad. Um, dad pulled off a blanket that was on him. And then at that time, Joel did hit him with a wooden pole that was one and in two inches in diameter, hit him on the left arm twice that caused him pain. All right. He has no priors, it, Judge, with us. Okay. And let's see. Are you Mr. Salazar, Marco Antonio Salazar? Mr. Senor Salazar, Senor? Si. Okay. Episada. Mr. Salazar, tell me what's going on. Uh, Le digo todo lo que pasó. Sí, no, lo que está pasando ahorita con él, con tu hijo. Oh. Cómo se está tratando en la casa ahorita. Uh, pero no está en la casa. Ok, so, ¿dónde está? En, aquí, en... No, no, no. Antes que esto pasó, ¿cómo se estaba tratando en la casa? ¿Cómo se estaba tratando él? Sí, en tu casa. ¿Hortando uh, o, o...? Sí. Uh, andaba, Ayer. Andaba bien, andaba bien. Uh, so, antes que esto pasó, ¿no tenías problema con él? Sí, había tenido... Ya no es lo que estaba preguntando, sino ¿cómo se estaba portando en la casa antes? Uh, bueno, a este... Se ha estado portando a bien y mal, a, a, pero sí he tenido problemas con él antes, hace un mes a, y algo. Judge, he said for the last month he's been having issues with them. I mean, his behavior is kind of back and forth where he'll be good sometimes, and then there's other times where he's not following uh, directions. Ms. Farmer, can you hear him okay? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Dad? What do you do you want do you want Marco to go home today? Yes, I got No. He's not ready for him to be home today. That's a no. Okay. Mr. Hall. Um, Judge, my clients want to go home, but apparently dad doesn't want him home, so I guess that's a major issue. <clears throat> Mr. Salazar. Yes, sir. We have different levels of behavior in the back for kids. Level 3C is the absolute worst behavior. Level 10 is the absolute best behavior. <laughs> what I need you to do is I need you to get from, you're currently at level two. I need you to get to level 10. Mm -hmm. That's best behavior in the back. And that way, if I know that you can behave in the back, you can also behave at home, okay? Mr. Salazar, do you understand? No. No, no. I, I'm, I'm talking to Marco Joel Salazar. Yes. You understand what I expect of you? Yes, sir. All right. But for right now, I'm going to order that you be detained. I want you to get to level 1-0, and then it gives me a good reason to reconsider whether or not you should be released, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> Oh, I could, um, that I couldn't, I couldn't think I was over. His dad was asking something, um, but I couldn't, I couldn't understand what they were saying. Okay. And then there was one. I lost juvenile again. Okay. Here we go. 
we go. Are you Miss Salinas? Yes, I am. Okay. Miss Salinas, how old are you? I'm 15. Okay. My name is Judge Porter. This is a detention hearing to determine whether you should remain in the back or be released from detention, okay? Okay. You have the right to remain silent and not say anything at all. If there is something you want to say, don't blurt it out. Instead, what I want you to do is wave your hand like this in my attention, okay? And I will create a special online breakout room just for you and your attorney. Y'all will go in there. Nobody else can listen. Y'all can discuss what you want to say. And your attorney, Mr. Hall, can advise you on whether or not you should actually say it. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. You have the right to have this hearing recorded. You also have the right to have this hearing in front of Judge Kim rather than me. If you want either of those things, Mr. Hall will let me know. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and just a second. Ugh. And are you Miss Flores? Correct. Okay. All right. Miss Blair, what brings Miss Salinas to court today? Uh oh, Miss Blair, I can't hear you. Ms. Blair, we've lost your audio connection. Arlene, do you want to come to my office? Yes. Judge Porter, can you hear me? I can. You, I can hear you. Oh. All right, Miss Blair. Um, she was charged with assault causes bodily injury, family member, and possession of marijuana less than two ounces um, on March 26th around um, 08.40 hours. Um, the mom, Alma, who is Giovanni's mother, advised she woke up that morning and went to Giovanni's room and caught her halfway in and out of the bedroom window attempting to sneak uh, back into the house. The mother believed that she had been out all night um, an argument began. Um, Giovanni raised her right hand into a fist, and the mother thought Giovanni was about to hit her. Yanexa, who is the victim and older sister, came into the room and got between them and slapped Giovanna preemptively to get her to calm down and prevent Giovanna from assaulting her mother. Uh, Giovanna and Yanexa then briefly fought. Uh, the victim felt pain, and while the officers were completing the paperwork in the kitchen, the mom had searched uh, Giovanna's backpack and located um, a, a marijuana, a glass pipe with the burnt marijuana residue and four blue bags that were empty, um, that were, uh, I guess, legally dispensed marijuana from California in a digital scale. Um, mediation uh, was uh, offered on March 27th at 1230 uh, via conference call. Um, it was not successful. The mother expressed concerns that Giovanna uh, was not following the rules and will continue to leave the house to go visit her boyfriend and use drugs. Um, she just got on level 1-0 today, and she did test negative for uh, illegal substances. All right, Ms. Flores, talk to me. What's going on? So, yeah, so the problem that I have with Giovanna is, like, um, she doesn't like to follow rules at home. And she just wants to do whatever she wants. So every time when I try to uh, let her know, like, she should not be going out with, at a certain time, especially at nights with no permission, 
and she gets us upset because she said like she's not doing supposedly nothing that she's with friends but like i explained it to her it's not like what you said you're a minor and you're at my house so i'm providing everything for you especially at this moment with the covid you should not be going out at nights it's a restriction that you have to stay at home so um she gets upset because she doesn't like to follow my rules and she just wants to do whatever she wants. Even in school, I've been having a lot of issues. She was sent to um, alternative school because of uh, her attendance and the way she used to speak back to principals and teachers. So, um, and she used to walk out from school uh, during the day. So the officer has to follow her, grab her, put back to school until they decided to put her in B-Star, which is uh, an alternative school. and having some issues so that day um like um blair said um i caught her sneaking like coming out from the window halfway half out and we did start like a, an argument because i was telling her like she should not be going being outside especially at this time and then um as soon as i said what i'm gonna, I'm gonna do i'm gonna start like putting screws outside the window so that way there's no way for you to open it. She got angry, she got upset and started arguing, punching walls. And it's when my daughter came in and ha she came between both of us and slap her so that way she can control. And then it was worst. It's when I told my daughter, Janexa, you know what? Let's stop here, uh, go to your room, call the police and let's let uh, have the police to handle this situation. All right, Mr. Hall. Um, judge, my client wants to go home. Um, I mean, it's up to mom, you know, on whether she's willing to have her home or not. And, you know, if you would allow her to go home. <clears throat> mom, do you want your daughter to come home? Of course I want, but she has to follow my rules. All right. And I'd ask that she be released on a monitor, Judge. Miss <clears throat> Salinas. Ms. Salinas. Okay. What did Judge Kim tell you last time? He said that I have to be on a one off for at least three days. And I followed that and I was a one off for more than three days. And he said, whenever I come back, I have to be a one off order to be released. And right now I'm a one off. And he said something about every month I have to have a hair follicle test for a drug test. And he also said that I have to take a drug test and I have to be come out like everything negative. And um, on that same day, I went back to my pod and they drug tested me and everything came out negative. So I passed the test. Okay. Give me just a second. I need to check on something real quick. All right, Ms. Blair, was it true that she was able to maintain level 1.0 for three days? Your Honor, um, the day that she was supposed to be released, she had gotten back on level 1A, so no. So she never maintained level 1.0 for 72 complete hours? No, she has not. Ms. Salinas. Yes. Did you maintain level 1-0 for 72 consecutive hours? Yes, sir. I was one over four then, days. Then, then why, why, are they, why do the records indicate something different? I don't know, but I know for a fact that I was one over four days. Okay. Ms. Blair, you're, you have access to your records, correct? Yes. Are you showing that she was ever level 1-0 consecutively for 72 hours. No, Your Honor. I know what she's talking about, but on that third day, she did not uh, keep the level 1-0, the third day that she was supposed to be released. Okay. Ms. Salinas? Yes. Okay. 
I need you to maintain level 1O for 72 consecutive hours. Once you do that, then we'll consider releasing you on the electronic monitor. Here's the way this is going to work. Um, I'm going to back your mom up on what she's doing. In the event that you maintain level 1O for 72 consecutive hours and you get released, it's going to be on the monitor. That's the first thing. The second thing is you will have monthly drug tests. Third condition is you have to obey each and every rule that your mother makes up. Okay? If your mother requires you to do online school for 10 hours a day, I'm going to back her up on that. You got that? It's two against one here, and you're not going to win. Do you understand? Okay. All right. But for right now, because you haven't maintained level 1O for 72 consecutive hours, I'm going to order that you be detained. But once you maintain that 72 hours, um, I'll allow you to be released. Okay. Ms. Salinas, you want to talk to your attorney privately? Yes. Okay. Okay. I can go ahead and talk. Uh, no, you need to go into the client counseling room. How do I do that? Okay. There should be a, a button down at the bottom of the screen that talks about rooms or breakout rooms. I don't know what to do. To go on a private chat with my attorney. Yeah, that hasn't showed up on <clears throat> mine yet either. Okay. Um, should be breakout rooms, and y'all should be able to go in there. I know it's not right there. It says breakout rooms right there. Yeah, right here? No, right there. Oh, oops. Okay, join breakout room. Mr. Hall, can you see the bottom of your screen? There you go. Um, bottom of the screen. It should show rooms or breakout rooms. Earlier it popped up and asked, but I don't. Let me see. I don't see it this time. Okay. Um, move your mouse over the screen. Hmm. Yeah, last time you did something <clears throat> and then it asked if I wanted to go to that room yeah let me hit leave and see what it says nope it just says leave meeting okay. you just a second <clears throat>
Yeah, we have to do it. For us. They can't do it by. Them. They don't know how to do it. Yeah. Okay. Oh crap. You got to stay in here because you got to be able to be available when they get done so they can do it. Hey, give me. Okay. Y'all should be able to. Well. Okay. Okay. Just a second. Okay, y'all should be able to go in there now. There you go. Well, I still don't nope, see it. That did not do it. <clears throat> so where did it work the first time? Go ahead and get it logged in to see, and then I, cause I can go to email unless you want to. There it went. There it went. Ended up having to just recreate the room. Yeah. Right. I I don't know what happened. Because the, the juvenile could get in there, but Ray couldn't. Me a little longer than I wanted to today. Hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes for eight. Okay, we're still broadcasting, so.
right. All right, Mr. Hall. Judge, she's saying that they told her that the system was messed up and it was showing it wrong. She said they have a book in their pod that shows how many days. And she's saying the book and the people back there told her that she'd been on 1-0 for four days. But she said they said several of them were screwed up in the computer. So I don't know. Well, the, the evidence that I have in front of me right now suggests that she still needs to work on her behavior. I need you to prove to me that you can get to level 1-0 miscellaneous and maintain it for that 72 hours. Once that happens, then I will order that you be released to go home. I expect you to maintain level 1-0 at home with your mom, okay? You're smiling at me. That doesn't give me confidence that you're going to do it. All right, that's going to be the order of the court. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Judge. Judge.